Hey YouTube, I thought that you guys might be interested in what I'm about to show you. Um, th this is the 14 footers that I cut the other day, that 340 board feet. And um, the top board that was on the top of the pile, this board here, I'm using to hold the tarp down. And the thing is, is I noticed that when I took the board and threw it on top of the tarp, something fell off of it out of this little pocket right here. And sure enough, this is what it was. It looks like it was a hollow point. And I find that amazing that I, I, you can see that I actually cut it in half. And the funny part about it is I didn't use the, uh, the metal detector on the flitches. I only used it after I got cut. And my theory was if I cut the flitch off down two inches, that there's no way I'm going to find a bullet within two inches. But sure enough, this was in there. When it went into the tree and then curved itself up into the wood. Pretty neat though. And the other thing that I want to show you. So you can see I have the super scanner there and there's nothing showing up there, right? If I take this piece of lead So somebody had mentioned that it only picks up ferrous metal. Now, I don't know if this has any Thing like that in it but this is a, a copper cladded you can see the copper there piece of lead so now it doesn't pick it up at a very good distance you have to be fairly close to it you know as opposed to metal that it picks up about three inches uh, through three inches of wood like steel but anyway I thought that was pretty interesting and uh, to find this after the fact. All I did, like I say, is I took that board, took it, threw it on top of the blue tarp here, and out fell this thing. Well, it's a nice Tuesday morning. Temperature's around 78 already. It's only around 9.30 in, or 10 o'clock in the morning. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to do some planing. It was raining, and now the sun's out. I'm not going to bore you with... Uh, watching me plane, although I'll plane one board over there. I just wanted to show you a little operation I got going here. So I have the doors to the kiln are open and I'm working on this pile obviously on the right side there and um, it's it's red oak and white oak that's stacked in there. You can see some of the boards I had trouble with that the top ones there when um, I had got those the blade was hitting nails and I didn't know it. So I'm setting those to the side. The other ones are coming out nice though, and I'm into the one inch boards now. So I'm gonna be playing in uh, red and white oak probably all day today to take me about three days or better to do that whole pile, so. Okay, YouTube, so I'm gonna give you some handy tidbits of advice of about uh, drying wood and all. Now, <clears throat> No matter what, the top lumber, if there's no weight on it, is going to end up being a little bit wavy and stuff. Now, we have a couple boards here, these here, that were on the top. You can see there's separations in them. Where some of the knots were and stuff, the boards got um, warped, cupped, and different little things. This one here, you can see how bent that is. That's because there was no weight on them at all. Now we're down into the pile about maybe three rows or so, or three courses, and the wood is getting much, much straighter and much easier to plane. So I thought you might want to know that. No matter what, no matter how good the wood looks when you take it off the tree, you still need to keep weight on it until it dries. Because if you don't, you're going to have trouble with it. I'm going to be putting a new set of blades on here <coughs> that I um, sharpened yesterday, that set that I put on the video. So I'll put one board through just to give you an idea how it cuts and we'll see if there's a difference between that and the set that I just sharpened.
Well, like it started raining. It doesn't look like it's going to do much rain because it's sunny right there. Oh boy. Just enough to make it miserable.